Hey crafters, it's Jen from My Create Crafts. Um, if you're new to my channel, welcome. If you are one of my loyal sus subscribers, thank you for coming back. So I'm starting things a little differently. Instead of working in design space, I'm actually working in Canva. Uh, if you haven't heard of Canva, it's a really awesome site that you can create all sorts of things on. So that's what I'm going to be using today. So you can just uh, go to canva.com and you can make a free subscription in here. <laughs> I'm going to go up here to create a design and I'm going to look for a letter here. So I'm going to click on this one letter and I can close this one out. And then I'm going to take something from the side here. I'm going to go to uploads and I already have what I want in here. Um, if you're new to Canva, I would highly suggest just taking a couple of minutes and learning it really quick. It's so, so awesome. I love creating things in here. Um, basically all I did was here's where I purchased it. I was in, um, um, design bundles and I purchased this uh, Santa's driver's license uh, original price is five dollars I bought mine for 85 cents I did it during the dollar deals plus I used honey and honey saved me 15 cents on that so I'm using this one if I go back here I can show it to you really quick I just download it here so I download the file I pick out which one I want it goes into my download file which is actually up here for me and then I can go back into uh, Canva and I can upload it here. So I already did that for us. So I'm just going to skip ahead. If you have any questions on how to do this, please ask and I can definitely help you out. Don't mind all these other pictures down here. My family and I actually purchased our small town movie theater. So that's what this all is. If you're interested in learning more about that or seeing what we're doing with it, you can check out my family's YouTube channel, Homestead How, and kind of see and go through what we are doing right now. So we're really excited actually to bring this up. This piece piano is still behind the stage. It was from 1858. How crazy is that? So that's what it is. And this is what the old movie theater looks like. It was an opera house. Anyways, we're doing crafting today, right guys? So if you're interested in that, go check out Homestead How on YouTube and you will find me and my family there. So going on with this, I'm going to be using these two. I already uploaded these into Canva. So I'm just going to drag them over here and I want to resize these. So my um, size that I'm going to be using could always be different than yours. So check out your files. I'm going to show you really quick what I purchased. I purchased these back in 2021. These are metal business blank cards. These are subbing ones that you can actually sub on. So that's what I got. In case you're interested, I will leave that down in the description below. So the size for me that works is 3.6 by 2.5. So I'm just taking this and I'm dragging it and you can see it says 3.6 by 2.3. That's exactly what I want. I want it a little bit bigger than my actual uh, card that I'm going to be using and I'll tell you why in just a second. I'm going to change this one to 3.6 by 2.3 and then I can make duplicates of this and put them right next to each other. So the reason I want to make it a little bit bigger than my uh, actual card itself is because when you're putting this over your card you want to be able to see a little bit of the size. And when I get to that point, I will show you what I mean. But for right now, I'm going to move this up here right next to it. I'm going to take this and I'm going to make a copy of it. And I'm going to put it right below here. And I'm giving myself space in between because I want to be able to take my scissors and cut it out. So I'm just going to keep doing that and make another one. I'm just pushing Control C and Control V. Whoops, I grabbed the wrong one right here. So here it is here. I'm just putting enough in between. You could also push this button here, duplicate. So I'm just giving myself enough room in between each one. Same thing with this side. I'm gonna line this up as best as I can. Canva does a really good job at um, already putting it in there for you at the same height and everything you need. So basically that's all you have to do. Oops, one last thing you do have to do, and I should have done it with the first one because then it would have duplicated every one, is flip this. You wanna flip it horizontally for each and every one because when you're going to be using your heat press, you're gonna be doing this backwards basically. So I'm gonna go in here and just click flip on each one. If I would have done it with the first one, I wouldn't have to waste my time and do each one 
but we all make mistakes. So learn from me and don't do what I did. So I just basically have a little line in between each one of these and these are the, both the same size as the 3.6 by 2.3. So basically all you want to do is print this out. You're going to need a uh, subbing printer. I have a regular EcoTank. It's a 2803 and I absolutely love it. And I'm using Hippo Sublimation paper. So uh, that's what I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to go up here to share and I'm actually going to download it right here. And I'm going to click download again. And you can most certainly do this in design space, but this seems just to work a little bit easier for me for what I need. Um, it was just a lot quicker. I don't have to futz around with the sizes or anything. I can get the whole page that I got on here to print it with. So that's why I'm doing it in Canva. Then if I go up to here to my download, I can bring it over here and show you here is what it's going to look like. It's all reverse. So when you put it on your card, it's going to be backwards. So I'm going to go ahead and print this out on my EcoTank and make sure that you're using sub inking, sublimation ink. So I'm going to go ahead and print this out and then I'm going to get set up by my heat press and I'm going to show you the next step. All right, so I am at my heat press. Here is what it looks like when it prints out. And I'm going to show you really quick what they look like when you're finished with them. So it's just like this. You have one side and then you have the other side. That's a bad example because I printed it the wrong way. So here's this side and then you flip it over and it's that way. So I said the first one was wrong because if you flip it this way, it's actually upside down. So I made the mistake with that one. So don't do what I did. So basically why I said make your paper bigger is because... This is what they look like. They're just regular subbing cards. So when you're gonna do it, you're gonna wanna put it over, see if you guys can see this, over your image. And you just wanna have it a little bit larger than your actual card. So when you cut it out, you'll have a little bit of space to work with. So I'm gonna cut one of these out really quick. And it doesn't matter how good or bad you cut, just as long as you get some of the edges away. So I'm gonna cut some of the edge here really quick. And another thing that I would have done differently now that I'm looking at it is actually gave myself a little bit of extra space in between here and in between each piece. And the reason is because I want to be able to tape this on here. So again, it doesn't matter how you cut. So as long as you don't cut out your words that are on here. So it looks just like this. I wish I would have given myself a little extra right here at the bottom and the top because when you put this on and this is you don't have to do anything with this. When you put this on here you want to put it just like that. So the back you are actually going to be subbing on. So if that makes sense. So I'm trying to just look. I can see here. You guys can see that there's their Im image right there and then the image there. So it's okay if I go over this just a little bit like that. So you got the edge hanging off here, but you wanna make sure you have everything else fine. So then I'm gonna take some of my tape. I'll show you this really cool dispenser I have. Love this dispenser. Take a piece of heat tape. It's specific for a heat press or heating anything. And then I'm just gonna put it on each side here. Just like that. And that's basically it. You could put it on the sides here, but I really see no point to it. Just as long as you have it covered there. So I did this one, and I'm going to flip it down. So I'm going to leave it just like that. And then I'm going to work with the next one. So I know the next one is going to be the back side. So I'm going to go ahead and cut a back side one and do the same thing. So I'm going to grab my little thing here. Same card that I was just using before, just a different one, same card. Same thing, I'm just putting it on top. And you just wanna see the overlap just a little bit so you can see, I don't think it, you can see it well because it's pretty light, but I can see the line at the bottom so I can tell that my image is going to be straight. Because my paper is not straight, that's okay because like I said, you're not gonna see that part. So I'm just gonna take my heat tape again and put it right over that, make sure it's flat and then also tape the top as well, just like that. So it stays in place, it's not gonna move. So the reason I'm doing two of them is because I can fit so many on here, but just for this purpose, I'll show you this really quick. And then I'm gonna take my Teflon paper and I'm gonna put it right over this. And that tape really helps so it doesn't move anything. You could also use parchment paper, I have that here on the side, 
but I'm just using this Teflon paper. So I have my heat press set at 360 degrees for 60 seconds. You can use an easy press, you can use a mini press, you can use an iron, but I highly suggest getting a heat press. I absolutely love this thing. So I'm going to get it started. I already have the pressure on it. So I'm going to talk about this really quick. You can skip forward if you have one already, but this is a, a fancier studio heat press. This is a 15 by 15. I've had it for about two and a half years now, and I absolutely love it. Um, never broke down on me. It works really well. I don't know if you can see it, but it says the temp and the time up there, so it counts down for you. I'm not pushing on it, you know, like you would with an iron or an easy press. I can show you two. I actually have two of these these little guys, but you could use this just as simply to do that on your piece of paper. But honestly, why do you want to sit there for each individual one that you're doing when you can do, you know, probably up to 10 of these? I'm only doing two now, so I can show it to you really quick. But honestly, I absolutely love this. If you're interested, I will leave a link down below for the one I have. Like I said, I've had this for about two and a half years now. Never gave me problems. I absolutely love it. Um, got six seconds left, so I hope you guys listen to me through that. Um, but in case you're interested, I'll leave the link down below. So it's finished. Whoops. All I do is lift it up. And you be very, very careful because it's extremely hot. And I should be wearing gloves, but I can't find them right now. So I'm just carefully going to pick this up and peel the paper off. Hot. Yes, I know you guys are yelling at me because I'm not wearing gloves and I should be, but ah, I can't find them right now. So we are just gonna do this. So here, actually, I'm gonna be unprofessional and pull my sleeve down. <laughs> Sorry about that. So there's that part. So this is the back. And then you got the front on this one. And again, excuse my fingers and my hands and my shirt. For not being professional, I do not know where my gloves are. So I'm going to peel this off. I'm just taking the tape off. And then there's what the front looks like. So you have the front and the back. And now I have to do the same thing on both of these again. So obviously I have the front on here. And i got to do the back on here. The same thing with this one. Still hot. I have the back. I need to do the front. Again, I'm sorry for my, my sleeves. Not very, very professional. I apologize for that. So now I'm just going to do the same thing that I just did, but here's where I made the mistake on the last one. You want to make sure that you're the same way. So this, I'm just going to turn this way, so I know that's the top. Same thing with this. This is the top, obviously, so I'm going to flip it this way. Then I'm going to take my next one and cut it out. Again, it doesn't don't have to have great um, lines in here. You just have to have it enough that it will fit on your thing with a little bit of extra paper. So this one, I believe, goes with this one. So we got to make sure that we do it the right way. So it goes like this, right? So I'm going to take it and flip it upside down. And then I'm going to take this. I'm going to show you an easier way. So I have it this way, right? So I'm not putting it on this side. I'm putting it down on my paper that I can judge. See, there's the image. And I make sure it's up. I can judge where it starts. So if that makes sense, I hope it does, I'm just finding where it begins. Then I'm going to line it up. Again, it doesn't matter about where I cut it. It just matters that you line it up straight on here. Then I'm going to do the same thing. Take a piece of my heat tape, put it over the top, just like this. Again, you can put it on the sides, whatever you want to do. So that is it. So I'm going to flip this upside down so it stays flat. I'm going to do the same thing with this. I know this is the top, just like this. So I'm going to flip it, and I'm going to make sure this goes the right way. And I'm just going to find the image on here. Again, this is why I say it makes it easier if your image is a little bit larger that you can kind of see it. So I see the edge here. Be nice if I could see it at the top as well, but I'm making sure that it's on everywhere. And once you get it on, so I'm take your heat tape and put that on there as well. So just like this. Oops, there. So then you want this piece up. So when you have those done, you just lay them down, put your Teflon tape or your paper over it again, and then do it for the next 60 seconds. 
I won't bore you guys with talking this time, so I'm gonna let this count down, and then when it's finished, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so I'm sorry I didn't have my camera on the first time, so I, I did the first one, and now I'm gonna show you what this looks like. So I'm picking it up very carefully because it is hot. So I will remind, remind you what the front looks like. So here's the front, and then if I peel this off, it's still very warm. Again, invest in some good gloves because this heat press you can use it a lot with or with any other things that you have like easy press or anything. So there it is just like that. So it's that side and then you flip it over and then you have this side here as well. Just like that. So it was a little bit off but that's okay. You're just leaving it for kids. So as long as it has everything on there that you need, sleigh ride, sleigh drive license, worldwide, worldwide, holy cow if I can talk, and then it has Santa Claus. So there's a bunch of files that you can purchase for this. Like I said, I have a few other ones. So I have this one, and then I also have this one too. So they have a bunch of files that you can do, but how cute is that? I love it. Different backs, everything. So really fun to do. Didn't take long. Cost but a couple of pennies to do this. Like I said, I'm using the Hippo transfer tape and the little license I got from Amazon. I will leave everything in the link down below in case you're interested, but if you wouldn't mind, give me a, th a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already, and leave me some comments down below. That just makes my day when I read comments from everybody saying, you know, if you liked it or what you, maybe even if you didn't like or any suggestions on what I could do better, but this is how they turned out. I absolutely love them. I, I hope you do too. Happy holidays. So if you want to come back, I will be doing a lot more holiday crafts, so stay tuned for those. Happy crafting, everyone.